in the previous lecture we were discussing about the case of thermally fully developed flow in a parallel plate channel with constant wall heat flux now we will see the consequence of constant wall temperature boundary condition for that problem <coughs> so case 2 hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow in a parallel plate channel with constant T wall so what i have done is i have kept in the board the derivation for the constant wall heat flux because i want to show you the contrast between that derivation and this derivation so wherever the things are the same as the previous case i will not erase and wherever are the things which are different from the previous case of constant wall heat flux we will erase that so we will start with the energy equation u del t del x what is del t del x for constant wall temperature we derived in one of our previous lectures what is that theta into dtm dx for constant wall heat flux it is dtm dx for constant wall temperature it is theta into dtm dx okay so this here you have for this this is zero what about this one del 2t del x2 for constant wall heat flux thermally fully developed flow del t del x is a constant but for constant wall temperature del t del x is not a constant therefore this is not identically zero for constant wall temperature we can at the most make an approximation that this is approximately zero and when we make this as approximately zero what is the physics that we are considering what does this term represent this represents axial conduction conduction along x so this means we can assume this to be approximately zero neglecting axial conduction so this is an assumption for constant wall heat flux that was identically zero for constant wall temperature this is not identically zero but this may be approximated to be zero by neglecting axial conduction as in comparison to axial advection so you can see that in the governing equation the sole difference coming out is with dtm dx there is a multiplier of theta okay so now let us look into this derivation so this doesn't depend on whether it is constant wall heat flux or constant wall temperature dtm dx expression this also doesn't depend on whether it is constant wall heat flux or constant wall temperature so in the governing equation when we have substituted dtm dx now in this governing equation you have an extra theta multiplier with dtm dx so with the previous term now we will have a multiplier of theta right whatever was in the previous case that was dtm dx now it will be theta dtm dx so here it will be theta so this will be theta so the governing equation
instead of d2 theta dy2 plus Nusselt number into u by u average, it will be d2 theta dy2 plus Nusselt number into theta into u by u average. So, one this theta multiplier has come, but this theta multiplier will spoil the ability of this problem to yield an analytical solution. So, this problem can no more be addressed analytically until and unless you have a very special case where u by u average is 1 that is a plug flow, but for a general flow you cannot solve this problem analytically. In fact, this kind of problem is an eigenvalue differential equation, eigenvalue problem in ordinary differential equation. So, you cannot solve this analytically, so I will give you an outline of how to solve this numerically. So, you have these two boundary conditions, on the top of that at the wall, this is the boundary condition at the wall. So, you can write minus k del del y bar by h So, what is this term in the bracket? This is theta, right? Can we write instead of partial derivative, ordinary derivative here? Yes, we can write because for thermally fully developed flow, theta is not a function of x, theta is a function of y only. So, we can write d theta dy non dimensional at y equal to 1 is equal to minus Nusselt number based on h, this is an additional constraint. So, we have a constraint 1, we have a constraint 2, this is a third constraint. So, we can solve this problem by using a method, numerical method called as shooting method. So, shooting method is a method where what you do is, so the from the name it suggests that you have a target, you shoot the target, you try to hit the target and based on your error in hitting the target, you make a revised calculation. So, what you do is that you convert this second order ODE into a coupled system of two first order ODEs. Okay. So, I will I am giving you the outline and your job will be to implement this in MATLAB, this will be your one of the homework. See all problems cannot be analytically solved, so you must learn how to write small programs at least to solve problems numerically, that will give you a good grasp on basic numerical methods for solving the heat transfer problem. So, I will give you the outline, I will tell you what to do, but you have to implement it in the computer. So, what you do is that you write this equation as a coupled system of two first order ODEs, what are will be the variables theta and d theta dy. Okay. So, you can assume that theta is equal to theta 1 and d theta dy that is d theta 1 d dy is equal to theta 2. So, you will get theta 2 as a function of theta 1 and another equation this one. So, these are the two coupled first order one is d theta 2 dy plus f into Nusselt number into theta 1 equal to 0, right. And the other equation is d theta 1 dy is equal to theta 2. So, you get a coupled equation, two equations with theta 1 and theta 2, but two first order equations. So, this is a trick 
of reducing a nth order equation into coupled n number of first order equation. Here we are reducing the second order equation to coupled system of two first order equation. Then what are the boundary conditions? At y equal to 0, see if we have both the conditions for theta 1 and theta 2 at y equal to 0, then we call it an initial value problem. That is we know at the start of the domain what is theta 1 and what is theta 2. So at the start of the domain uh, or we can use the start of the domain at y equal to 1 also. So at the start of the domain at y equal to 1, let us say y equal to 1 that is a wall. We consider the start of the domain, so theta 1 is 0 and at y equal to 1, this is theta 2 at y equal to 1. is minus Nusselt number, but you do not know Nusselt number. So you can give the boundary condition if you guess the Nusselt number, right. So the first step is, so I am writing the broad step. So, you have d theta 2 dy bar as a function of theta 1, theta 2, y bar and d theta What is this F1? What is this F1? This is theta 2 and what is this? Minus F into Nusselt number into theta 1, right. So these two equations. Now you use the boundary condition, you, these are the two coupled equations. Now guess Nusselt number. Once you guess the Nusselt number, then what you will get? At y equal to 1, you have boundary condition theta 1 equal to 0 and at y equal to 1 theta 2 is or yes d theta dy is minus Nusselt number. So these two now will become known if you guess Nusselt number. So with this you can use a initial value problem solver. In MATLAB you have some built in functions like OD23. OD45, this kind of functions, built in functions in MATLAB you can use to solve for theta 1 and theta 2. Then using this, so these are basically using a method known as Runge Kutta method. This is a method of numerical solution of initial value problems. Okay. So once you calculate this, then you can calculate what is theta 1 at center line and theta 2 at center line. This you can calculate from wall, you come to the center line and you calculate theta 1 at center line and theta 2 at center line. So this initial value problems are marching problems that is in a particular direction you march. The direction may be time, the direction may also be a, a physical 
direction, I mean x or y direction. So, here in the direction from the wall to the center line we are moving. So, at the center line you can calculate theta 1 and theta 2 starting from the wall you march. Now, theta 2 at the center line you calculate and what do you expect? See this boundary condition says that at the center line you expect theta 2 to be 0. So, you ask now the question is it 0? If it is 0 then you have guessed the natural number correctly, but if it is not 0 you have to do a defined guess based on what deviation from 0 you have got from this. So, that is what is shooting method that is if you your target is to hit the bull's eye the bull's eye is 0. So, if you do not hit the bull's eye you look into the deviation from the bull's eye and then re, re retake your shooting. So, then you uh, if not correct the Nusselt number guess and iterate. So, in this way you go on correcting the Nusselt number guess till you iterate to a convert solution that whatever guess of the Nusselt number gives theta 2 is equal to 0 at the center line that is the convert value of the Nusselt number. So, that is the procedure for solving this problem there is no shortcut way of doing this you have to write the program by yourself you have to solve and I will give you the answer you have to check the answer. So, let me give you the answer for this. So, the Nusselt number is 7.54 that is the answer for this problem. So, you write a program and then get the value and check whether you get this of course, now you know the answer. So, you can play a trick with me by giving this as the initial guess and then in one step without iteration you can check the you, you can get the answer, but I mean all of us understand that life is not as simple as this. So, uh, anyway let us now move on to the other geometry which is the circular pipe. hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow through a circular pipe. So, we have now seen the parallel plate channel situation just now we have seen now we will see the circular pipe. So, the concept wise there is absolutely no difference only the mathematics wise it will be little bit different which we will see that what difference it is and what is the consequence in the solution, but physical concept wise that is why I first started with the parallel plate channel that it may be a very simple physical situation, but it gives you the physical understanding of the problem completely. Now, for flow through a circular pipe, uh, let us start writing the governing equation. So, u del t del x in place of u what will be this? So, the circular pipe let us say this is the pipe with this as the z axis and this as the r axis. Okay. 
so in place of u it will be vz del t del x will be del t del z plus in place of v it will be vr so the only difference is that in the cylindrical coordinate system the laplacian will take this form that is when you consider the derivative with respect to r so this is 1 by r del del r of r del t del r the del square term will involve this if it was a spherical system it would have been r square so where from this come r r square all this because in the cylindrical system the elemental area involves 2 pi r dr and in the spherical system it in the spherical system it is proportional to r square 4 pi r square so so uh, the elemental volume is 4 pi r square dr for the spherical system and here 2 pi r dr into l so when you divide the all the terms per unit volume that 2 pi r becomes 1 by r and 4 pi r square becomes 1 by r square that is how these terms come so it's just a matter of changing from one coordinate system to the other it has uh, i mean no special significance so case one constant wall heat flux which we will work out and constant wall temperature i will give you the as a homework just like the previous case you have to use the shooting method to solve this problem but uh, i will work out the constant wall heat flux case so constant wall heat flux del t del z will become dtm dz right what will be vr vr will be zero for fully developed flow what will be this just like del t del x equal to constant for thermally fully developed flow with constant wall heat flux in parallel plate channel similarly del t del z equal to constant so this will be zero so you are left with vz dtm dz what is dtm dz we have derived it for a general cross section so we can use it for a circular pipe so what was that q double dash p by m dot cp so you can write this as dz into q double dash P is 2 pi r. Perimeter for a circle is 2 pi r divided by m not is rho into v average into a pi r square. Right? Is equal to alpha into 1 by r del del r of 
r del t del r. Now we will define theta is equal to t minus t wall by t m minus t wall and non dimensional r is equal to small r by capital R where capital R is the radius of the pipe. So, we can write del T del R is equal to del T del theta d theta d r bar into d r bar d r, right? Just the chain rule. Changing the basis from t to theta and r to r bar. So, del t del theta is T m minus T wall and D r bar D r is 1 by capital R. So, what is R del T del R? Then what is del del r of r del t del r? So, finally, 1 by r del del r of r del t del r right T m minus T wall by R square into because this small r you can write R bar into capital R. So, that capital R into this capital R makes it R square.
so we can write v z into q double prime into 2 pi r by v average <coughs> rho pi r square is equal to alpha there is a cp huh? there is a cp right we have missed the cp here please include the cp we have missed the cp here is equal to alpha into tm minus All right, just check. Now, what is the next step? In place of Q all, we will write H into T all minus T m. And alpha is K by rho C p. So, rho C p gets cancelled, pi gets cancelled, r square also gets cancelled. So, 1 by r d d r r d theta d r plus v z by v average into So, you see here this is h into 2 r by k, h into 2 r by k, what is 2 r? 2 r is the diameter of the pipe. So, it is h d by k that is Nusselt number based on the diameter d. Normally, the convention is for a pipe, the, the reference length scale is considered to be the diameter of the pipe, whereas for a flat plate, it is the length of the plate. So, these are physical reference lengths governing the physics of the problem. So, for a pipe it is no, never the length of the pipe that will seriously govern the physics of the problem, but it is the diameter of the pipe that will or radius whatever. So, normally in engineering it is the diameter that is considered as the reference scale. If somebody takes radius also it is ok, there is no problem, it is just a matter of convention that we take uh, as the diameter in engineering. So, what are the boundary conditions? So, let us integrate this uh, d d r of now where does fluid mechanics come into the picture here what is d z by v this you tell this is the solution from Hagen Poiseuille's flow what is that what is the velocity profile this is 2 into 1 minus small r square by capital R square. This is Hagen Poiseuille flow, fully developed, hydrodynamically fully developed flow through a circular pipe.
Now, can you tell what is the value of C1? What is d theta dr at r equal to 0? It is 0. So, if you substitute d theta dr equal to 0 at r equal to 0, you will get C1 is equal to 0. So, boundary condition number 1 d theta dr is equal to 0 at r equal to 0 that will tell you C1 equal to 0. So, d theta dr is equal to minus 2 nasal number into r square by 2 minus r 4 by 4 divided by r that is r by 2 minus r cube by 4 right. So, theta is Then we can write boundary condition number 2 at r equal to 1 what is theta? Theta is theta is t minus t wall by t m minus t wall r equal to 1 means wall. So, theta is 0. So, this will give you what is C 2. So, that means you can write theta is equal to Nusselt number into some function g of r, right. Now, how do you calculate the Nusselt number? Just like the parallel plate channel case, we will use the definition of bulk mean temperature. So, use the definition of bulk mean temperature. So, what is the definition? Rho C p is constant we are assuming. So, what is dA for a circular pipe? 2 pi r dr. So, integral of Vz into T into 2 pi r dr by V average into pi r square 0 to r. So, you can write Tm is equal to Vz by V average. into T into 2 R bar D R bar 0 to 1. So, what we have done is we have absorbed one capital R with small r and, and one capital R with D of small r. So, it has become R bar D small r bar. Now, in place of th t, we will use the definition of theta and write
what will be this last term? Remember integral of Vz into 2 pi r dr is equal to V average into pi r square. So, that is the non dimensional form of that ratio which becomes 1. So, that is integral of Vz into 2 pi r dr by V average into pi r square that ratio is 1. So, you see I am trying to generalize it, it does not depend on what is the velocity profile, this becomes always 1. So, you can write integral of V z by V average into theta into 2 r bar d r bar 0 to 1 that is equal to 1. So, V z by V average is 2 into 1 minus r bar square, then theta is Nusselt number into g of r r bar into 2 r bar d r bar equal to 1. So, that means Nusselt number is equal to 1 by integral of 0 to 1 4 into 1 minus r bar square into g r bar into r bar d r bar right. So, this is a number once we this and this is a simple polynomial integration there is no trick in this integration it is just a because this is a simple polynomial. So, you once you do this integration you will get the value of the Nusselt number and the value of this Nusselt number is 48 by 11. So, I am just giving you all the answers because it is I think a good exercise that you complete all these things by yourself by doing the small missing algebraic calculations. Because I have given you the entire framework the entire method, but some little bit of polynomial integration and those things are not numerically evaluated. So, you can numerically evaluate those and check these answers that will give you a good confidence of how to approach these problems. The other case is the constant wall temperature, I am giving you the answer you have to do by the shooting method. So, the again the important difference between the previous case and this case is that when you are considering the equation what will be the what will be the change in this equation if it is constant wall temperature this will be multiplied by theta that will be the only difference just like the parallel plate channel. And then you, you have to work it out by the shooting method and I am giving you the answer. So, Nusselt number, so this case is constant wall temperature. Nusselt number is equal to 3.66 based on the diameter. So, we have worked out 4 cases or we have discussed about 4 cases constant wall temperature and constant wall heat flux each for parallel plate channel and circular pipe. So, these 4 cases we have covered and velocity profile we have considered to be fully developed pressure driven velocity profile which you can derive from the navier stokes equation assuming fully developed flow now in practical industrial applications often the laminar flow constraint is not satisfied so then if the flow is turbulent flow and turbulent flow through a circular pipe is very common in industry so if the pipe is either heated or cooled then what type of relationship you will have between the Nusselt number and the other parameters. So, that is given by many correlations for turbulent flow you cannot work it out analytically. So,
so based on experimental correlations many popular correlations are there i don't expect that you remember many correlations but at least one correlation which is industrially used very extensively must be learned at this level because at the end we are interested to solve engineering problems and that is one of the very important correlations which we use for turbulent flow through circular pipe for solving engineering problems and that is given by a correlation called as ditas bolter correlation so let me write down this correlation for turbulent flow through circular pipes one need to use appropriate correlation one example so uh, the in this correlation the value of this so again you see that nusel number is of the for the of the order of reynolds number to the power n into pandel number to the power m so that fundamental understanding still remains now this pandel number to the power n n depend value of n depends on whether it is heating or cooling if the wall temperature is greater than the bulk mean temperature n is 0.4 and if it is less than the bulk mean temperature that is cooling that n is 0.3 remember that this is average nusel number because in a turbulent flow you do not achieve a situation where you have a constant heat transfer coefficient so you have uh, this h varying continuously with x so you have h average into d by k that is nusel number average and reynolds number of course rho into v average d by mu now a very important thing see as engineers when you make calculations you have to use the properties mu rho k these properties are functions of temperature so at what temperature you will calculate this property so not at the bulk mean because at the uh, close to the wall the temperature will be most mostly driven by the wall temperature mostly governed by the wall temperature far away from the wall it will be mostly governed by the bulk mean temperature so the engineering practice is to evaluate properties at t wall plus tm by 2 okay 
if it is for flow over a flat plate then instead of Tm it you can use T infinity. So, Tm see now you have learnt some aspects of force convection you try to unify the concept in the force convection for flow over a flat plate whatever was the role of T infinity the same role is played by T m or the bulk mean temperature for an internal flow which is confined between boundaries ok. So, uh, I do not want to bother you with many of these correlations because I as I promised you that we will not discuss in the undergraduate level some formula which we cannot derive in the class, but this is a sort of an exception as an example because this is so commonly used by engineers I believe as an engineer you must know this correlation. Now, so far we have discussed about what let us summarize we have discussed about force convection with flow over a flat plate and flow in a channel or a pipe we have derived the momentum equations the energy equations we have solved the fluid mechanics problem and the heat transfer problem. But in all these problems we have neglected viscous dissipation which was one of the terms that appeared in the derivation of the energy equation. Now, what happens what are the practical engineering situations when the viscous dissipation term is important and how can you analyze those situations mathematically. So, we will learn that in the next lecture when we discuss about cases where viscous dissipation terms may be important. Thank you very much.